Hello everyone, I am Felipe Perez. I'm going to continue with the maintenance of this Sony Bio laptop. This is the second episode where you learn how to apply thermal paste and reassemble the computer. If you would like to see how to disassemble this computer, I invite you to visit my channel for Perse Technology where you will find the first episode. I'll also place a card up here so you can access the first part directly. Let's continue. I'll be using isopropyl alcohol to clean the components. Although it's a liquid, alcohol doesn't damage the components. On the contrary, it cleans electronic parts. First, I'm going to completely remove the old thermal paste. It has to be spotless. You can see I have done a thorough cleaning. It's completely clean. With all the old paste removed, in a moment, I'll apply the new paste. I will follow the same procedure for the heatsink. Now I have cleaned the heatsink and I have also maintained the fan and the motherboard. The processor is clean too. So it's time to apply the thermal paste. Here is the thermal paste. I will apply it evenly, ensuring there are no gaps without paste. Similarly, I'll apply paste to the processor. Great, I have applied thermal paste to both the processor and the heatsink. If a little extra paste spilled over, it's not an issue. You can clean it with a paper towel. Make sure the paste is evenly spit on both parts. When I connect the motherboard to the heatsink, there will no longer be direct contact, preventing overheating. Now I'll place the heatsink back into position, ensuring it fits perfectly with its screws. The motherboard is ready to connect with all its components. Let's begin reassembling the computer. Keep in mind that at some point the video will speed up because the reassembly process can sometimes be a bit slow. I'll work carefully, but where the video speeds up, it's just to move things along. Let's start it. This size of the motherboard faces don't work. If the heatsink had been on top, maintenance would have been easier. In this case, I need to rotate the motherboard so it aligns correctly. Now, I'll start reassembly. I have installed the motherboard. Now I place this plastic rail where the cable passed through. You need to handle cables very carefully. Do you know what happens if you forget to like my tutorial? 
YouTube technology algorithm validate the videos. If you like them, you keep them alive and help them reach more people. If not, they disappear. Don't let this tutorial die, give it a like and leave a comment. Thank you. Notice that I have placed this plastic part. It has tabs that need snapping perfectly. Otherwise, the base will shift out the position. Now it's securely in place. Make sure the tabs are properly set. Next, I lay the cable on its designed guide. You can use a plastic tool to help position the cable correctly. This cable needs to go underneath, so I will need to rearrange things here to rotate. So I will need to rearrange things here to route it below and connect it after forward. This connector is a bit tricky because it's tiny, so handle it carefully to avoid damage. This tool helps me because its tab lets me grip the cable and attach it. Now I'll connect the cable around the motherboard. Once the cables are in place, it's time to install this cover. This cover has small plastic tabs on this side and over here, so handle it carefully. I also need one screw here. I have installed all the screws where they belong. Now it's time to attach the CD drive. This drive has a connector that attach here. Now I connect this cable here.
That's done. Now it's time to install the keyboard. Align it properly so the tab snap in place. It's time to connect this cable. Now all the cables are connected. Finally, I need to install the car to connect these cables. These cables have pins on the car and they must align perfectly. If not, it could cause functionality issues. Since I'm nearly done reassemble this part, I want to test if the computer powers on. I'll connect the solid state drive and the memory. Before securing everything with screws, I will test to ensure everything is connected correctly and functioning. I'll connect the battery to test it and ensure it works before sealing the computer. Remember, it has a small latch here. Let's test it. Something isn't connected correctly. Clearly, something needs to be adjusted. I will have to remove some components and check the cables. Here is the issue. This is why it's important to test before securing the screws. I'll try again. Let's plug in the power cable. There we go. It's starting up. Windows is loading. which means everything is working fine so far. I will enter the password. Perfect. 
the fan is working. Now I can shut down the computer and secure everything with the screws. Let's finish assembling and install the final screws. I will remove the SSD drive again. So I can install the cover that protects all these connectors. Now I can tighten all the screws. I'll be right back. I have finished installing all the screws. Now it's time to install the battery. Remember, the battery has a latch. Just pull it slightly and it snaps into place. Lastly, I'll install the cover. Done. I will connect the power cable again. Now I just need to wait for Microsoft updates and patch to finish. So Windows can boot up. This concludes this tutorial. Remember, this computer was overheating, which is why maintenance was necessary. I replaced the thermal paste and cleaned the components and fan. If you experience a similar issue, this tutorial will help you maintain your computer. See you next time.